Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video I'm going to restore back in function and upgrade the Asus Pro 31S. I got this laptop right before begin dump in a trash and then finish in a landfill. Cosmetically this laptop has a few damages. This laptop is mostly damaged from the right side. The bottom case has one small crack near the keyboard. And to the upper case around the display bezel, the case is just open and some screws are missing, but nothing too serious. The display is broken as well. It is cracked on the right side also, and I think this laptop is dropped or thrown away. From the bottom side many screws are missing, but the case is in a great shape. And when I do the rest of the checks I found that this laptop has no RAM and no disk. So this is very expected, because these parts probably were in a working condition and probably reused again. And I got this laptop without the charger. Well, the first what I need to test this laptop is the charger. But unfortunately I have no charger for these models. But I have an Asus charger for the newer Asus laptops, which is with the same voltage and the same power, just the connector is a little bit different and is not fitting to the older models. So because I want to save some money, I've decided to convert this charger to fit on this Asus laptop. And for this I'm going to use a cable only, which is a very cheap and easy to find. When I'm on the charger I want to say a few things. This is possible to do with almost any laptop, but not with all. The most important things are the voltage and the amperes. The voltage and the amperes must be the same as the laptop requests. For example, this laptop uses 19 volts and 4.7 amperes, or this is a 90 watt charger. So here I can use any charger with these specifications, no matter if the charger is from Acer or HP or any other brand. If the charger is 19.5 volts, then again it will work fine, but is not always recommended. And if the charger has a lower voltage, like 18 volts, then the laptop will turn on, but shortly after the laptop will start to shut down in the midst of using or working something. That's because the charger is weaker and it cannot fully power up the laptop. Well, the charger is ready for testing. But first, before I plug the charger and turn on the laptop, let's find some RAM for testing and for later. And the laptop is turning on, and I can hear the startup sound, which assuming too, the laptop is starting normally, which is great for the beginning. So now let's start, and first I will start with a full teardown. I will going to separate all parts, because of the cleaning and later to do some upgrades.
Well, the teardown process is complete. And now I can move to the next process, which is cleaning the electronics. And first I will start with cleaning the motherboard and the other electronics from the inside. And to clean the motherboard and the other electronics, I will use soft brushes, cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. After I finish with cleaning the motherboard and the other inside electronics, including the cooling fan, let's move to the keyboard. So here, first I will start with removing the basic dirt and dust. And later I will move to deep clean and cleaning each key separately. Also to clean the keyboard I used a soft brush and again cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol. And when I'm on the keyboard, I wanna say something. If you're going to clean some laptop keyboard, then be very careful to not damage some key. Do not press heavy with a brush. And do not put too much alcohol or any kind of cleaning liquid over the keyboard. Because if the liquid enters to the inside of the keyboard, it may damage the entire keyboard. Well, the keyboard is done and looks much better than before. Also, all the electronics are clean and now I can move to the next step and that is cleaning the laptop case. The laptop case that has some electronics on it, like the upper case, I clean it using a brush and cotton buds and isopropyl alcohol for the corners. And for the rest of the cleaning, I used anti-static glass cleaner and a soft cleaning cloth. The laptop case that is without any electronics, I mean to the plastics and the metal parts, including the heatsink, I wash it using dish soap and warm water. I have done this because with washing I will remove all the dust and dirt and make the case almost like a brand new. After I clean the laptop case and the case gets dry, I move to some small repairs. The case is not too much damaged and this is easy to repair. From the front side where the case is broken, first I stick paper tape and from the other side I stick the case using a super glue. Actually here the paper tape is preventing leaking the glue from the other side, which can affect laptop aesthetics or cause some other damage. So now it needs some time, until the glue gets fully dry. But until that, I move to the final thing, and that is the laptop display. For this laptop, I bought a used display. The new displays can be still found, but are much more expensive, and it doesn't really worth it. 
And because this display is coming a little bit dirty, let's move to the final process of cleaning. To clean the laptop display, as always, I will use a 96% isopropyl alcohol, but mixed with anti-static glass cleaner. Also, I will use a cotton bud for the corners or the edges, and I will use soft brushes and very soft cleaning clothes. And when I'm on the display, I wanna say something about it. Getting a used display is a good option, but these used displays mostly may come with some scratches. Sometimes it may have some unnoticeable scratches, but sometimes it may have very noticeable scratches. Also, these used displays may come with some brighter or darker spots. But in more from the half cases, these used displays are coming in a good condition. And this is how the display is looking after I clean it. There are a few scratches on it. I found a four of them, but the scratches are very, very unnoticeable. Well, now I got everything that I need. And the next is assembling the laptop and making some upgrades. Feeling stuck here lately Think I might be going crazy Your song on repeat on my radio Your song on repeat on my radio Now you've been away for so long And I'll be fighting feelings so strong Your song on repeat on my radio Your song on repeat on my radio I need to get out You're all I think about My head is Your favorite movie Can't believe you did that to me Your song on repeat on my radio Your song on repeat on my radio I need to get out You're all I think about My head in the clouds With you I was bouncing off the walls But now I'm on the floor Or did you let me go? I want something new Well, let's slow down and make the first upgrade. And the first upgrade is the CPU. Instead of Core 2 Duo T5450, I will upgrade to Core 2 Duo T7100s. Actually, this laptop is supposed to come with Intel Centrino, but the CPU is changed before. Also, the difference between T5450 and the T7100s is not too huge. The T7100 is about a 20% faster and it's easier to overclock to get a better performance. No 
well. Now let's move to the next upgrade. And that is the RAM. On this laptop I will install a 4GB of RAM. Also 4GB of RAM is the maximum that this laptop supports. And the final part is the disk. On this laptop I will going to install a 480GB Kingston SSD. Probably this is too much for this laptop. But the last time I bought two of these. One I used it before on a Dell and now it's turned on this one. Well, and the laptop is almost complete. And now I took the charger. And now I'm going to solder the wires from the charger, which are twisted only. I can use the charger in this way with no problem. But it is much better when it's soldered. And after I finish with the charger, I move to the last process of testing and installing the Windows 10. And after all changes that we make in this video, this is the final result. Well, now let's take a closer look. On this laptop I install Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. And everything is working well without any problem. And I have no problem with the drivers or something. The performance are pretty good for some laptop that is made in 2007. And if I compare this laptop with some of the new laptops, this laptop is a little bit better than a brand new laptop from $200 or $250 with Intel Pentium or Intel Celeron CPU. I say it is a little bit better because this laptop has dedicated NVIDIA GPU and the dedicated GPU always plays a good role. So this laptop is great for all basic things like web browsing, emails, social media networks, using Microsoft Office, working with documents, watching videos and movies and listening to music. In a gaming area we cannot expect a lot, but this laptop can run some of the great older games. And the first game on the list is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. In the Call of Duty I used medium settings and full screen resolution and under these settings the Call of Duty is running perfectly fine. The next game is the legendary GTA San Andreas. In the San Andreas I used high graphics and full screen resolution. And this game is running satisfying good. And the game is going smoother than the Call of Duty. And I think the frame rate is mostly about and above 40, which is not bad at all. The next game on the list is Minecraft. The Minecraft is running well also. 
except at the beginning loading the map terrain is going slower, but later the things are far better. The next game on the list is Stronghold. I play this game on this laptop because these strategy games are real benchmark. At first everything starts with a few moving objects, but later how the developing is going, the game has more and more moving objects, which load the laptop performance more and more. So in this game I have no any problems, like lags or crashing. The next game on the list is Serious Sam, the first encounter. The Serious Sam, the first encounter is one of my favorites and it is great to play on some other machines. The Serious Sam also is a great adventure and it's working perfectly fine on this laptop. And the last game is the iconic Cadillac and Dinosaurus. Simply, I cannot skip this game when we're talking about some older hardware. And this laptop is a perfect for arcade games. And I must say that the experience is much better when you play some of these games on the older hardware. Well, and this is all about this Asus laptop. It's a kind of older laptop, but still fully functional and definitely not for a trash and not to finish on some landfill. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some touch in a function again. Also, if you want to support my work and my channel, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.